All right, you're 11. Uh, your next RE lesson recorded online remote learning. Um, we're going to continue on our module, which we've been doing for a while now, which is based on life skills, preparing you for that transition out of high school, which is going to be occurring this summer. Uh, whether you're going into sixth form, you're going into an apprenticeship, or you're going into employment, um, we're trying to give you that understanding of key issues and um, key skills to help that transition be as smooth as, as it can. So your titles at the top, what are interpersonal skills and why do we need them? And there's a start on the board, there's a lad here called Jay and he's been writing his CV. Now, if you don't know what a CV is, I'm sure most of you do. It's a document you write to um, show a potential employer why you should have that job, as in the skills and experiences you have which make you suitable for that job. So he's writing his CV, he's put in his work experience, his contact details and his qualifications. Now he's been advised as part of the application process to put in a section about his interpersonal skills. However, Jay isn't sure as to what that means and he's having to think about it. So we've got three thoughts. Could it be things like how I communicate with people? Could it be things like my timekeeping and my attendance? Could it be things like if I can do filing and photocopying? So what you've written the you start a race is a you, you, your first uh, level of challenge is to say which one of those are correct and write the correct one down. If you think you know what an interpersonal skill is, there's a more challenging uh, task, which is to give an example of what you think an interpersonal skill is. And your mega challenge is to explain why an employer would be bothered about somebody's interpersonal skills. So title, please write it down and then have a go at the challenge level and we'll get started. Pause the video, make sure those are done, please. So here's the definition of, of interpersonal skills. The skills you use to successfully communicate and work with other employees, such as listening skills, your attitude, and how you speak to others. So this is away from, you can't really get qualifications or experience for this, but it's a fundamental part of working. It's your ability to work with people. The chances are your job is going to involve you working with colleagues or working with customers or working for a boss or having, or you being a boss for somebody else. And if you don't have these interpersonal skills, such as being able to listen and understand and take on advice, such as having a good attitude to your work and being able to communicate well, then you're going to struggle in that job whether you are qualified, if you've got the GCSEs for it or not. So today we're going to look at what interpersonal skills are and begin to understand why they're so important. So one thing I want you to, to consider as we go through is why would an employer be interested in, and they're called soft skills, the skills you can't really get an, a qualification for, but you need them anyway. Uh, so we're going to identify different skills, interpersonal skills, and, and put them into correct categories. Uh, and maybe we need to sort of look into how we need to change our mindsets to ensure we have good interpersonal skills. So your first task, this clip will be linked in your Firefly task, which this video is a part of. I'd like you to watch the clip and then answer the questions based on your challenge level. So the red uh, ones are the first level, then the orange are the second level of challenge, and the green ones are the hardest challenges. So uh, answer them to your level of ability, please. Uh, go through. You don't need to write the questions. Just write the answers down. Pause the video. Go watch the other one and answer the questions, please. Your next task is uh, quite a simple one. Basically, there are uh, 12 aspects of interpersonal skills in front of you. So, for example, having a growth mindset, which is that belief that um, going wrong isn't the end of the world. Going wrong is an opportunity to learn and to grow. And by definition, failure is the only way you can improve or else you won't change how you react if you don't fail at something. So go through each of these and identify if they are body language public speaking or changing your mindset and all are really 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 important to have good interpersonal skills you've got to display and hold yourself if you're hunched over and slouched and staring at the ground and not making eye contact then people are going to think you aren't good at working with other people public speaking is fundamental because at some point you may have to give a presentation you may have to go and speak to your boss you may have to talk to customers you're going to need to communicate face to face not just via email and finally, having a good mindset in work and in life, things are going to go wrong. Uh, things are going to not go the way you, you, you expect them to go. Uh, and having the correct mindset is fundamental to ensuring that those things which go wrong don't sort of aren't the end of the world. It's just a part of the process of growing and, and of learning. You will make mistakes. But if you treat that mistake as an opportunity to learn and get better, 
it's a much better mindset and it's a much better example of an interpersonal skill than if you start moping and getting down and start um, giving up because something's gone wrong with you because no one's ever gone through life and got everything perfect the first time of trying. So you're going to draw a table, body language, public speaking and changing your mindset, three columns, and then you're going to put each of these in their correct uh, category in a correct column. Some may go into more than two and you may want to draw it across the lines or draw an arrow or write it down in both. And when you've done, I'd like you to highlight two, maybe three or circle or underline two or three, which you think can, you should focus on things which you know and really think about stuff you would like to improve on. Which interpersonal skills have you identified as the most important uh, to develop for yourself so that you can you can really demonstrate these skills when you go into the world of work. To conclude your lesson today is the plenary to show that you understand the distinction between uh, good interpersonal skills and poor interpersonal skills. And, and a reminder, these skills can be the, the difference between you getting a job and you fail, not getting a job or you getting a job and doing well in it or getting a job and not enjoying it and not getting the most out of it that you can we can get as many GC, uh, you know, we can help you get as many GCSEs as possible. But if you haven't got interpersonal skills, it's going to be very difficult uh, for you to make an impact on your place of employment or whatever you are, you know, if you go to university or um, you go into an apprenticeship, you've got to have these skills if you want to be successful. So the first level of your of your plenary to end the lesson is to draw and label some of with poor interpersonal skills. So draw, draw some and make sure you get the body language right and label the stuff about them, about the manners and maybe the, the mumbling. And, you know, I know it's hard to label thinking positively, but draw an arrow to, to the brain or something and the eye contact. Uh, and then draw somebody with good interpersonal skills. So, 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 so you've got that visual representation of how someone with poor skills looks in comparison to someone with good skills. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is, that comparison will be made for you one day. You will go to an interview and you will immediately be judged based on your interpersonal skills. And there's a very quick, instinctive judgment. Is that right? Probably not. They should wait for longer. But if you're there slouchy and won't make eye contact, you're mumbling, the judgment's already been made. And you need to make sure you make that right first impression. Once you've done that, I'd like you to explain in two or three sentences the key differences. How would you summarize the distinction between poor interpersonal skills and good interpersonal skills? And then you're done for today. So hopefully this lesson has helped you to understand that soft skill of interpersonal skills, which are often really, really, really important in you getting and succeeding in a job or in education. Uh, and unfortunately, it's sort of not taught properly or it's very rarely brought up uh, in your education. So I wanted to do it today to sort of make sure you're aware of it as you begin the transition from your high school life to whatever may come next in the summer. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you upload a photo of your notes. I am keeping a copy of them so I know who has and hasn't done the work. Uh, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.